Okay, so in front of you now, as you can see, is a pile of carabiners and slings and rope and devices for climbing here. So I threw everything on the table. I'm going to go through everything one by one. I just wanted to show you the ample amount of stuff you can use to uh, climb in the outdoors safely and, and, and keep it fun so it's safe. So... I will say that my setup here is more of a um, repelling slash rescue slash safety setup. So I have a lot of heavy gear and redundancy and uh, and stuff that's going to help me um, get to some place. Not really for the sport, but if I have to get somewhere for uh, exploration. And so I don't really have a lot of traditional or sports climbing stuff here. I I I, I do have a few uh, quick links. That I use, but for the most part, um, everything is meant for um, outdoor rescue, repelling, and safety first, not weight, and and the sport aspects of it. So I'll push this all to the right so we can make some room, and let's see if I can just go through everything one by one and show you what we're working with here. So I think the most obvious thing we should talk about is grigri here, and if you don't know what a grigri is, it is one of the most uh, popular belaying uh, devices you can have. Here I have a special carabiner, carabiner design uh, for belaying. It keeps the belaying device locked um, in this par portion of the carabiner and then you can keep this to your uh, attached to your harness uh, safely so it doesn't cross load. Um, the Grigory itself is a multifaceted device meaning that you can use it to climb, to repel, to belay, uh, along with a lot, a lot of other cool things. And so this is something I will always bring um, in my pack as a device there. So next up, we have um, a few different, and I'll, I guess I'll talk about these few at a, a time here, just to save some time. And we have a few different contraptions that we can use. So, talk about these three devices now. So in front of me here I have kind of a a medley of devices. This is a project progress capture rope man 2. You can tell by the teeth is number two. And this is a pulley um a petzl pulley here. And this is kind of a, a hybrid of both of those. That's why I showed all three of these. So this is um we call micro traction, I think they call this. And so here I use bring usually these three out, and I'm not going to get into their use cases in this video. Um, but you know, for cross rescue or some kind of rescue, you would use these two devices, or you can also use a rope man if you had to. Um, the negative aspect of using a device that has teeth is that people will tell you it will shred up your rope if you take a fall on it. So um, that is something I have seen and experienced with using these teeth-like uh, devices. So um, that's the good thing about the Grigory is it doesn't it uses um, it doesn't have teeth. It just kind of squeezes the rope, but it may not grip as well as these other devices here. So the micro traction itself is a very popular uh, climbing hardware uh, contraption that I recommend uh, somebody looks into. Um, and it can be locked out and and um, I also pair them all with some pretty rugged solid uh, carabiners um, because it's going to be a lot of um, weight that I put on these if I do um, versus some of my other carabiners I'll use there so the nice thing about the rope man too is very light um, it does kind of uh, create does kind of grip this funny the way it's uh, shaped in here and so you can uh, if you twirl this a lot, you can cut up the carabiner. Um, so you want to be wary of that. And of course, the pulley system itself is a solid pulley. All of these um, devices are rated around, I want to say, uh, about the same. Um, I'm trying to figure out where, to where it tells you the, the load here. Um, Okay, yeah, so this is uh, 15 kilonewtons, which I don't know what the poundage would be, but that's pretty good uh, for a pulley system, and I think this one's going to be 
um, even uh, around there. It's probably going to be uh, around at least 15, if not more. Um, I think I actually have to take the carabiner off to see what it is. So you can see, you can just bring this out and uh, where does it tell me the load on this? That's what I'm confused about. Usually it says on the device and I'm not seeing it, which is weird. Well, anyways, um, I'll have to look in the rating and I'll link those so you can figure that out. But there you go for the climbing devices. Another uh, device which kind of is uh, similar to the Rope Man or the Micro Traction is this hand assembly. This is an index from Black Diamond. And it's called the index because you're supposed to be able to put your finger in here. Uh, might be the wrong hand I'm using. I actually just kind of go like this and clip it and go like that a lot. That's how I like to use it. So I'm, ironically, I'm not using in my index, I'm using my thumb a lot. And this is used for um, if you're on a rope system and ascending, this is a great way to ascend. This also can help you pull your body up um, for progress, progress capture. And what I keep on here is I keep a uh, sling on for a foot loop. Um, and I pretty much keep this carabiner on this at all times. And then I'll clip it on my belt like so and have these both hang. That way I don't have to worry about getting a foot, foot loop on there. And um, it's all kind of one package there. So another device I recommend for climbing. So we have uh, a Prusik uh, loop. This is a jammy, a 5.5 millimeter jammy on a nice new carabiner. Um, this is a uh, Hot Forge Black Diamond carabiner. Um, very you know, nice, nice light but solid carabiner. And so the purpose of this is to back up when I am rappelling with the, the Gree Gree um, along, well, pretty much that's all it is. It's a backup of the Prusik. And I'll, you always put this on as a secondary braking option um, on top of the mechanical device. And if you don't know how to tie a Prusik, uh, there's plenty of videos to do that. So this was a solid purchase. And, um, I, and I, I have to say, I really, like the feel of this it definitely grips and i feel i feel uh pretty solid if i had a dangle on this carabiner and the jammy here so i also have um just some climbing uh gloves here for belaying and so i don't get rope burns and repelling and they're new so i haven't really used them but um I recommend you get something like these and you can also use uh, just regular work gloves you get at Home Depot that have the padding there. The key thing is you get something that's reinforced where the rope would be if you're gripping it. So if you take a spill and you go to grab it, you don't burn a rope singe in your hand like you'd expect. Uh, attached to this, I have this really big, big, big carabiner. Um, and I have two of these. And these, I kind of store my gloves on these, but because I wear the gloves, this becomes a free carabiner. So I usually use this one along with uh, this one to set up anchor systems, and I'll talk about in a second, but that's what this big carabiner, uh, carabiner um, would be used for that I also store this on. Okay, so uh, I will use this. I'll talk about the slings last. I want to talk about all the uh, everything else first. So here I have just a set of... Oh. So here I have a set of six um, quick links, and this is what you would traditionally use for, um, you know, sports climbing, traditional climbing, when you have, uh, you know, bolts in the rock. And I don't really do much of that, so these are basically just nice to have. I may or may not bring out all six when I go out, um, but I have found that. They are good at linking and connecting uh, ropes along with a lot of devices to extend them if I had to. Um, and I'll show you a method in a later video of how when I'm rappelling with the Gree Gree 
and my personal anchor system, I actually use one of these to clip a secondary anchor to my harness directly to the system that backs up my rappel rope in case that were something would happen. So um, there's many cool use cases. These also, obviously, these carabiners can be taken out and used as carabiners. Um, I will say that out of all the carabiners I'm showing you here, from this new style locking carabiner to the old school uh, black diamond carabiners, along with these Petzl carabiners and the big giant carabiner on my ropes I showed you about. And then lastly, uh, where is it? And then on my personal anchor system, or not my personal anchor, and lastly on one of the anchors I have, I have these wire gates here. I had to say my my favorite carabiner or feels are these big bad boys here. Um, but in terms of uh, safety, and number one, I'd have to say this is the one I would recommend out of all of them. Uh, super light, feels it feels super light, and it's just feels strong, and it's just um, and when you screw it in, it doesn't just it actually eases in, and you can feel the tension there. It's a really nice uh, carabiner. So highly re highly recommend these new um, blue traditional um, black diamond uh, newer versions. Uh, I want to say this is the hot fork and then the green ones right here are the, um, what are they called? Uh, starts with a P, uh, Pelotron or something. So those are pretty much different styles you can have. One thing I forgot to show you was just a, uh, on this traditional carabiner I carry, um, just a double belay device. This is a, a ATC device. Uh, this is the XP. There's an ATC guide which is recommended. I don't really use this but I'll probably end up replacing this with a guide at some point to carry. Um, this is cool if you're rappelling down and you're using a dual rope and you want to retrieve the rope. Uh, there's cool ways you can do that. And I pretty much just have this as a backup in case I need to use it um, for emergency purposes. Okay, and then here, right in front of me here, there is a personal anchor system. And I keep this on a old school, I shouldn't say older, but an older one because I like how it matches the green tip here. Um, one trick I try to do with my climbing gear is I try to keep my carabiners always connected to the things they're going to be used for. I don't switch them around. I want to use them. I only want to have, I want to have everyone to have a purpose. And again, it may not be saving weight but the kind of stuff I'm doing, it doesn't matter. It's just having all the gear ready and available. So the cool thing about the personal anchor system is that it's constantly attached to your harness and then it gives you the, the, the freedom to clip in anywhere um, with this, this um, loop system here. This is like 20, rated at 22 kilonewtons, so pretty strong loop system. And I will say that I also use uh, I usually clip in here and then I'll repel with the gri gri while this is tied to my harness um, and use this to repel. Uh, so I don't, so I have a little bit of an extension from my harness which gives me um, the flexibility to use the, the jammy as a backup um, farther down my harness on a separate loop which I'll talk about. So um, these two systems are two ways of connecting my uh, me to the rope when I'm repelling and the personal anchors obviously can be used to for multiple use cases Okay, so lastly, we'll just talk about uh, the different kind of slings and accessory cord options I have here and I'll lay them all out so we can see what we're talking about uh, Okay So just have some uh, seven mil accessory cord. This is uh, good for cordelettes. Um, this is just the extra stuff I cut from the original 30 foot one. And I have this, you can use this for all kinds of stuff. Um, but the ones I consistently will use is I've actually pre-made a uh, quad anchor here. I have four um, just wire carabiners 
on a quad, a pretty much fixed quad anchor. Um, if you don't know what a quad anchor is, essentially it's 15 to 20 foot accessory cord, uh, 7 to 8 mil, this is a 7 again, um, where you um, have it pre, uh, you can have it pre uh, tied or knotted to actually just clip up, and this is good for if you're going to a gym or outdoors and you want to sit in a second. Um, and you can see just to reinforce and it's very peace of mind, I put a little electrical tape around the fisherman's knot so that um, it doesn't come loose. Obviously, these, this uh, tape wouldn't stop the force of your uh, body falling on it and keeping it from separating, but the knot itself does that. This knot is a fisherman's knot, double fisherman's knot, and it's used to... Um, it gets stronger as you pull it tighter. So this is kind of keeps it from flopping around. And also, it's a, a peace of mind there. So that's my quad anchor I have. I usually keep this as is, and I won't use this as much. If I do use it, I use it in parallel with slings that I'll show you here to create anchors in like around trees or bigger items. Just because you can't really clip into stuff uh, in the wilderness there's no bolts hanging anywhere. They usually use this to clip into some kind of sling that's wrapped around something. So that's the quad anchor I'll have. And the other, like I taught, mentioned before, the other chunk of uh, anchor option I use is this. This is a very, I want to say it's a quadruple size uh, sling um, that is coiled up in this um, big coil here, so it's not super long. And this is what I'll traditionally probably use outdoors um, to make a a, uh, a, a equalized anchor um, with multiple uh, points. And you can see I have another big carabiner on top of that as well. And like I mentioned before, I usually um, will use these two um, big carabiners here as either the direct anchor points to the, the wall, or I can use them as the... Um, points to where the rope goes through as a redundant point. So really big, don't really, it's definitely overkill, but I like the safety and the protection you get out of those. So that's pretty much why that's the case. Uh, and then lastly, we have a few different uh, more slings I have here. And you can see just these two are the same length but different uh, diameters and width. Um, I wanna say this is a 120, 120. This one obviously has a thicker diameter. And I have some carabiners on those. And then lastly, these are just 60, um, 60 slings. And you can see I actually have a, a tip lock on here, which you can use for another uh, project, project's capture um, device. But this is something I just have as, as a backup, like the ETC. I, I barely ever would use this unless I had to. Um, and it's not heavy at all. It's a good little thing. Um, so these themselves will be what I can probably use in with the quad anchor um, if I wanted to wrap these around some kind of tree, uh, tree trunk and then I can clip the carabiners into this loop in different places for the redundancy purposes. So that's pretty much it. The only other thing I'll talk about is uh, harnesses you can use and I have a couple of harnesses that I own and they're both just, um, you know, they're not super light. They're not really meant to be sporty. They're just meant to get the job done. Uh, this is a, this is a momentum, black eye momentum harness and only has one. And I also have, this actually comes with my other, this is two my uh, big guns. I think it's called the big guns harness, which it is definitely an overkill harness, definitely an overkill, um, but if you're doing like big wall stuff, it's the way to go. Super comfy, has two loops, um, and this is what I'll traditionally um, bring out just for my comfort, and I can put all this gear on this harness here. So that's it for the climbing gear, on to the next one. Okay, so let's take a second to talk about climbing ropes. Now, obviously, there is a whole other video you can do on the different kinds uh, of climbing ropes between being dry core, dry, 
wet, uh, dynamic, static, uh, and the diameters and all different kinds of specs. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of that. I'm just going to talk about the two different ropes I own and I um, have used um, outside. So the one to my left right here is a static uh, rope. This is a 9 mil. Let me just make sure I'm giving the right specs here. Um, it is a 40, let's see, we got a yeah, 9 millimeter, uh, 40 meter uh, Canyon Dry rope. This is a uh, made by Tendon, uh, they're a Czech company. And this one um, is really good for repelling outdoors and emergency rope. Um, and I'll probably usually pack this one uh, when I'm going out because it's smaller and less bulkier and it packs down more. Um, to my right, I have a dynamic uh, rope. This is a 60 meter uh, sterling 10 point VR10, and it's actually 10.2 millimeter width. Uh, and this one's, like I said, 60 meters dynamic. So I would use this for um, getting up a mount, uh, getting up a, a wall face, maybe uh, ascending to some higher place. Um, and more traditional climbing. Um, if you were to take a fall and you'd add slack in the rope, you'd want to be on this rope, not the static. And that's like kind of a uh, rule of thumb. You don't want to take a fall on something like this, and this will absorb a lot of your fall. But also with that being said, um, the, um, the rope itself here is going to have more elastic kind of bands on the inside to give it that stretch, but could be... Uh, more, uh, you know, more fragile in terms of like the sheath getting torn up and, um, you know, uh, cutting the rope itself. But all in all, two very good choices, and they are both reasonably priced. Um, I want to say this was like hundred something dollars, um, and then this one was like a hundred and fifty bucks. Um, so for a good starter setup, these are the way to go.